Right, so before the next presentation, I'll continue to harass anyone standing. There are chairs up front. There's like three here, right on the edge, so you don't even have to interrupt anyone. This row has some free. Um, so please, if you'd like, come sit down. There's a few. Come this way. The insistence isn't working as well as I hoped, so I'll continue to try. Um, but just for the second presentation, um, we'll have leakage detection with C squared tests. Um, this is by Amir Moradi, Bastian Richter, Tobias Schneider, and Francis Xavier Standard, and it'll be presented here by Bastian. So, yeah, thank you, Colin. Um, so, when we perform security evaluations, um, we want to assure that a device does not leak sensitive information or sensitive value during the execution of the cryptographic operations. And often these tests are performed based on attacks, for example, in common criteria. And these have the downsides that you have a high complexity, you have to choose the method, the intermediate values, and the models. Every attack has to be optimized, and so it's easy to miss an attack vector. But there's also the approach of leakage detection, which tries to, to use uh, methods or like general statistical assumptions to get independent of models or attack methods. So we can really treat the implementation as a black box and don't need to adjust the method to it. And the most common today is a test vector leakage assessment based on Welsh t-test. And this one uses two, basically two properties to reduce this uh, complexity. So first it reduces to two classes. So for example, fixed versus random test. Uh, and it also applies simple statistical treatment. So we only estimate sat uh, single statistical moments or multiple statistical moments. But there are also downsides resulting from these uh, simplifications. So um, first, we have the reduction to two classes, which um, can result in false negatives, because maybe we can get like a leakage which is um, too similar in these two classes, but might be detectable with multiple classes. And also, um, because it only depends on separate moments, maybe the leakage is spread or distributed over multiple moments and cannot be detected with uh, only looking at a single moment because there's, there the leakage is quite small, but summing it up or comparing the multiple moments, the leakage might be enough to be detected or exploited. But the C-square test can address these two issues. Um, First, the C-squared test works with multiple classes, so we can uh, use more classes than the two in the t-test. And also, the C-squared test is based on the whole distribution. So we can detect leakage which is spread over the whole distribution and not only in, in single moments. So coming to our methodology, um, First, when we perform a fixed versus random test, we first sample two sets of traces, one with a fixed input, one with uh, random inputs. And from these, we compute the histograms for each point in time of the, of the um, two classes. And from there, we can go to the contingency table and compute our test statistics. Um, a good point here is that the first part is actually the same as for the t-test when we used this fast leakage assessment presented last year here by Reparas et al. So we can save a lot of time during the computation and uh, use like the same pre-computations as for the t-test. Um, yeah, this is one advantage of the C-square test. Um, we can use multiple classes, which works basically the same. We sample more sets than the two, multiple sets, for example, for different fixed inputs. And then we just get more rows in our contingency table and can, again, compute our statistics. So the specific test we use here is Pearson's C-squared test of independence. And this one has the null hypothesis that the occurrences of the observations are independent. And from this, we can conclude if this Null hypothesis is rejected. The leakage is informative, so we might have some leaking information. Um, this is based completely on this contingency table of frequencies and not on some estimated moments, but on the sample distribution we got from our measurements. 
But there's one downside, so we have to uh, always compute the p-values for the chi-square test because the degrees of freedom d do not converge for the, uh, as for the t-test. So we have chosen p as t to the power of minus 5 for the later experiments, which is equivalent to the usually used threshold of t equals 4.5. Um, yeah, we can, when we compute it, we can first like build the contingency table, which is basically just transforming the histograms. Um, then we have to compute the, S, um, the expected values for each cells in there. And then the computation is very efficient. It's basically just using, uh, computing the difference, summing everything up, uh, and then applying the chi-square probability density function to get the p-value, which is the result of our test. So to test uh, our approach, um, we first sim uh, did simulated experiments with uh, univariate leakage. So we basically uh, simulated a mask hardware design with parallel processing of the D-shares. So our secret value is split up into D-shares, uh, Xi, and we combined these shares with a Hemming weight leakage function and added Gaussian noise to, um, so we can produce different SNR values. And when we test this with a uh, fixed versus random test, we can see at the results that for the lower orders, the t-test actually performs better than the chi-square test. But with increasing orders in uh, our test order three, d3 and d4, we can see that the shield square test improves and we expect that the advantage gets even higher for increasing orders. The other parameter we have to test is the SNR and there we can see that the advantage we saw before decreases with, uh, with shrinking SNR and that the t-test is not that uh, strongly influenced by this. Um, so we then uh, went on with multivariate leakage, so with uh, parallel, uh, with serialized um, computation of the shares or um, like ma software masking. So we did not add up the, the leakage uh, we simulated. And for this, we need uh, some kind of combination function. So first, we chose the normalized product, which is also usually used uh, for t-test. But for the chi-square test, we additionally use two other combination functions, which is first the sum combining, which is again possible because we have a look at the whole distribution and not only at, for example, the means. Um, this has the advantage that the noise is not multiplied. So it only adds up, but it's not multiplied as with um, the, the combine, combination function before. And also we uh, tested multivariate assumptions. So when we have a look at the results here, um, we see that the t-test actually performs better for multivariate leakage. It seems to cope better with a, with a com combined um, noise in the, in the normalized um, combination function, normalized product. And um, also the normalized product seems to be the most, most efficient um, combination functions for non-negligible noise levels. So only when we get like a really, really high SNR, um, the other combination functions like some combining and multivariate histograms work better than the normalized product. Um, we also tested this um, method on real uh, hardware. So we implemented a, a present threshold implementation with uh, three shares on a the Cura G board. Um, this one has like a split up S box into the G and F function and is uh, a byte serial implementation which uses a shift registers for the state. So when we have a look first at the fixed versus random results, um, we can see that the, the t-tests behave as expected for this implementation, so we don't get a first order leakage. We have like a small second order leakage and a high third order leakage. And when we have a look at the results of the chi-square test, we can see that it actually behaves quite similar to the third order t-test. 
but at the same time, it gives us a, a higher confidence than the t-test. Um, when we have a look at the fixed versus fixed, which is like one thing you cannot do with a t-test, um, for this test, we recorded eight different fixed plain texts. And first, as a comparison, we compared um, different pairs of plain texts, which is on the right uh, plot here. So we can see that the different combinations of the plain texts detect leakage at different points of the com uh, computation. Um, but additionally, we used um, the chi square test to compute the, uh, the chi square value over um, the whole eight classes. Uh, and this also detects, like the, the fixed versus random test, this huge uh, leakage at the beginning of the computation. Uh, but it additionally detects uh, more smaller leakage at later times uh, during the computation. So we get like a, a small benefit from this. Um, okay, so we, we, we saw that we can uh, detect leakage, which is uh, distributed over multiple moments in our co uh, computation, and, but we also need to, to exploit this leakage. So um, we can, again, use this multi-class capability of the chi square test, and um, then perform an detect, attack by using it as a distinguisher, and for each key candidate K, we can compute a separate test for this. So we can, for each key candidate, we can sort the traces into the, the different classes of the model, for example, a Hemming distance or Hemming weight, and calculate the histogram for the classes, and then again perform our statistics. We can then rank our key candidates by their uh, resulting p-value and get, hopefully, the correct key. And um, yeah, this, this really gives us the benefit of using the, the whole distribution. So it's this, in this case, it's similar to mutual information analysis, but it provides an additional confidence level for each key candidate. Uh, what we have to consider here is also, like for mutual information analysis, um, the number of classes has to be lower than the number of key candidates, otherwise we get a bijection, and because the, the order is not considered in the test, um, all tests will result in the same result. Um, yeah, our results here for this um, present implementation are that, as expected, the first order CPA didn't work, the second also didn't work, but uh, surprisingly, the third order DPA uh, CPA also did not work for this, with, uh, even with f 50 million traces. But using our chi square test, we were able to recover the correct key uh, successfully after 28 million traces, so after half our tr uh, trace set. So this really gives us a benefit of using like multiple orders or using the higher orders of the, the leakage. So. To conclude, um, we presented the chi square test as a complement to the t-test. It's able to, to outperform the t-test in the cases that, for example, the noise level is not sufficient or the leakage is distributed over multiple statistical moments. But you should always use it together with a t-test because there are also many cases which, in which the t-test works better than the chi square test. And so, uh, we propose to, to use the t-test as before to evaluate the security order, see if you reach the, the, the order you intended with the implementation, but also use the chi-square test to evaluate the, the noise level of the, of the whole implementation and to see whether um, your leakage is supported by enough noise and cannot be easily broken by switching to a higher order, for example. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, so before questions, there are still seats open. People at the back, you can come forward. If you're standing, feel free. Lots of seats. Um, questions? We had one up here, I believe. 
Thank you for your lectures. So I have a question. How、uh, have you ever made the cases with、uh, the、uh, x squared tests that can cause the false positive? And how do you distinguish the cases with false positive, and、uh, true positive, and false positive?、Um, you mean that we detect a leakage we cannot later exploit? You mean? Yeah. Yeah. Of course, this can happen. I mean.、Um, Especially when combined with noise, I mean, maybe you are you're able to detect it. Similar to the t-test, I mean, you also can detect leakage with a t-test. You might not be able to to exploit able to exploit in a divide and conquer attack. I mean, this this can happen. So、um, the behavior of the、uh, false positive and true positive,、uh, the square test. The, can you make a comparison of x square test and t-test in the behavior of、uh, false positive and the true positive? No, so we, maybe we can discuss this later offline. Okay, thank you. Were there other questions over here, Manuel? Thank you.、Uh, in the univariate case、uh, for the t-test, did you did you perform some pre-processing、uh, to attack the higher order countermeasures? You mean for the for the hardware experiment or for the yeah, simulated for, ones? Yeah, for for the simulations, you you. No, we did not perform any pre-processing. We just summed up the Hamming leakage,、uh, Hamming weight leakage,、uh, with additional noise. For for the t-test. Oh, for the t-test. No, for the t-test, we also did not perform pre-processing. For the univariate, you said, right? Yeah. yeah. For、no. the t-test again, the again the sharing, you you don't perform pre-processing before.、Uh... No. For this test, we did not perform pre-processing. Okay. Great. I think there's time for one or two more. If any questions. If not, well, thank you very much, and、um, yeah.